Welcome back to my channel. Remember that friend who convinced you to sign up for a course or do something that you've always been too afraid to try? But then you finally did it and you were so happy that your friend gave you that little push? So that's my goal here today. I'm gonna be that friend for you. I'm gonna challenge you to venture outside of your comfort zone and convince you why you should learn to code. No matter what your background is or your current situation, whether you're a high school student, a recent university grad, or a working professional who's looking for a career change, this video is for you. If you're already convinced that you should learn to code, but you're struggling to make it happen, check this video below, I'm gonna paste the link, where I give you a roadmap to learn coding for free. For everyone else, my assumption is that you're still early in your coding journey or haven't even started. You're also probably at the stage where you have endless questions, but you've started typing those questions into Google and you're bombarded with an overwhelming number of search results. After hours of searching and reading online articles, you're still asking yourself, is coding, is coding really, for, really me? for me? If it sounds like you, you're in the right place. By the end of this video, I'm gonna try and answer as many questions as possible. And if I do a good job, I'll hopefully convince you to start learning to code. What I'm going to cover, what is a software developer? What's holding you back? What's in it for you? And how do you get started? So let's start. What is a software developer? The job title itself seems self-explanatory, but a lot of people think that software developers are hacking the, the internet or fixing broken computers, but that's not true. So let's first talk about hardware versus software for a second. Computer hardware is the physical component of a computer that you can touch and throw away. For example, your computer keyboard or the mouse. Software are intangible programs and applications installed in your computer hard drive that allows you to perform different tasks. For example, browsing the internet or writing a document on Word. Just think about uh, your everyday life. You're binge watching your favorite Netflix show or ordering delicious food on Uber Eats. Uh, all these are softwares. Developers are also responsible for documenting features, testing, debugging, and optimization. And they need to work collaboratively with designers, marketers, project managers, and other IT professionals. So yes, communication and interpersonal skills are really important for software developers. Contrary to popular belief, Developers aren't just nerds talking about video game all day. <laughs> Developers don't know everything, so we spend a lot of time searching for answers and solutions. Yes, Googling is actually a real skill. The better you are at asking the right question and leveraging advanced features a search engine have, the more efficient you'll become at solving problems common type of developers. Instead of overwhelming you with jargon and Wikipedia style definitions, boring, I know, I wanna give you a quick overview of some of the most common job titles and explain them in plain English. So web developer. Web, web developer build websites like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Netflix. On most job searching websites, you will also see many other job titles that are variations of web developers, like front-end developer. These people make sure that the website and app look great on all devices. Most of what you see and interact with on a website is within the scope of a front-end developer. Fonts, color, sign-up forms, page layout, navigation, all of these are what front-end developers do. Backend developer. You don't necessarily see the work of a backend developer, but they play a crucial role in supporting the front end and making sure that everything runs smoothly. Here are some examples of things that a backend developer has to answer and write software for. 
What happens when you click login after entering your username and password? Who's taking care of the data? Where is it stored? How does the website verify your identity and return the correct information? Now, full stack developer. If you've been following along, you might have correctly guessed that full stack developers have the skills to complete both front end and back end tasks and projects. Mobile app developers, they use similar programming languages and development skills to create, test and develop applications on mobile devices. Finally, DevOps engineer. DevOps is short for development and operations. These folks enable products to be released and updated quickly by removing barriers between development and deployment. They introduce processes to balance the need throughout the entire application lifecycle, like coding, deployment, maintenance, and updates. They collaborate with developers, system operators, admins, and IT operation staff to ensure that everyone is on the same page. Now, part two, the myths that are holding you back. Myth number one, coding doesn't seem very exciting. Coding was definitely not love at first sight for me, but I'm glad I gave it a second shot or even a third one. Coding isn't for everyone, but it's definitely not boring. And it's a valuable skill to know whether you want to do it full time or not. Don't be like I was and run away when you see code for the first time. Give it enough of a try before you reject the possibility of discovering a whole new world. Second myth, when you tell yourself you're too old, not smart enough, or not good at math. What all these statements have in common? They are all self-defeating beliefs and a closed mindset. You can learn to write code no matter how old you are. Maybe you won't absorb new information as quickly as your 20-year-old self, but you can definitely do it. Because if not now, then when? Don't let age get in the way. Whoever told you that you're too old or too young to learn something new, prove them wrong. If you tell yourself you're not smart enough, I'm here to tell you otherwise. Your effort, hard work and dedication outweigh your intelligence. In addition, no one is expecting you to build a social media platform or a large scale web application from scratch. Every master was once a beginner, just like you. If you are a problem solver and logical thinker, then the industry needs more people like you. And if you tell yourself that you're not good at math, then I have good news for you. You know, you just need to know the basic. Do you know addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division? Great, you don't need anything else to get started. Coding is not about memorizing and applying mathematical formulas. It's about logical thinking and problem solving. So stop beating yourself up and making excuses and just start trying. Last myth, you don't need a computer science degree to get in tech. You might think you're in a disadvantage without not having a technical degree, but you, however, you're not a blank slate. You have something that they probably don't. You have education and work experience in other fields. So technical skills, they can always be taught, but your soft skills and the new perspectives that you can bring to the tech community and the company that you'll be working at are your biggest assets. And you should be proud of them. As long as you're willing to put in the hours to gain those technical skills, continue learning and broaden your network of connections, you will eventually find a position for yourself. Sure, it won't be easy, but every baby step toward your goal will give you a feeling of winning. The key message here is, you don't need to study for four years to learn computer science. And yes, you can become an awesome developer and get hired whether you do or don't have a computer science degree. Now, part three, What's in it for you and how do you get started? I know, I know, taking the first step is always the hardest and you're still not sure if this is the right move. So let me tell you a few things 
that learning to code can benefit you. You get hired and you'll make money. This is probably the most obvious one. Coding and programming careers have great earning potentials. But even if you currently work in another role at a company, you can make yourself infinitely more valuable by adding programming skills to your tool belt. Social aspect. You will join a massive online community and have the opportunity to expand your social circles through your creation projects and uh, networking. You will meet incredible people in the tech community. I can assure you of that. Personal development. Your problem solving and critical thinking skills will improve, you, improve as you learn to make a holistic approach to analyze problems and consider different solutions and trade-offs. You will gain more insight into how technology works and see the world from a different perspective. Writing code is also a form of expression and a fantastic way to unleash your, your creative side. You can create anything your mind can come up with and it's right at, at your fingertips. Best, Best feeling, feeling ever. Feeling ever. Finally, you'll be able to build your own projects. Do you already have a business? Imagine all the things you can do to grow your business by being able to create your own website and apps. Hiring developers is expensive. So being able to code yourself means you can save a lot of money. And at the very least, make sure you're not getting overcharged. Okay, that's it folks. I hope by now you're convinced to start your coding journey. Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content like this. Thank you everyone and see you next time.